your Sabbath day, Heavenly Father. The days that have holy convocation serve you a little more about you. And as your word goes forth, Heavenly Father, give us to understand, Lord God, not just to understand your word, Heavenly Father, but also to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. The title of today's <coughs> lesson is Honor and Obey Your Parents. Honor and Obey Your Parents. And as we do every Sabbath day, we're going to read Psalm 119, 1, 167, no, 165 to 176. Psalms 119, 165 to 176. It says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation, and done thy commandments. My soul I kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimony for all my ways are before thee. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments of righteousness. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and the law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I, I do not forget thy commandments. Amen. So dealing with the lesson again. Honor and obey your parents. And this, like I said, this is a command that you read in the Bible that, that this is the only one that came with a promise. When you, when you honor your mother and your father, he said that the days on, on, on your earth may be long. So this is the only command he gave with a promise. But I see a lot of times, you know, uh, children won't obey their parents if their parents are bad or, you know, not good parents. But you don't see any stipulation in the Bible where it says, Honor and obey your parents unless they're good. You know what I'm saying? It tells you to honor and obey them regardless because they like say that those are, you know, those are the vessels that God uses to bring us through. Like I said, as long as you, you know, continue to be obedient, keep the commandments of God, even if your parents aren't really, you know, in, in, in tune and, and giving sound advice, you still honor them. Now, of course, you don't have to obey them if they're telling you to do something that's contrary to the word of God, but you're still supposed to honor your parents. So let's go now to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 5, we're going to read 1 through 6 and then verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 5, we're going to read 1 through 6, and then verse 16. When you get there, go ahead. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in, the, in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us even us who are all of us here alive this day. Yes. The Lord talked with me face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord. For ye were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up into the mount. So right, so right here, he gives an example whereas he, remember we heard, like I said, the, the children of Israel, they, our answer, they heard God speak the Ten Commandments. But then after the Ten Commandments, they didn't want to hear God speak anymore. So that's why when you read um, <coughs> verse 28, let me see, 28 through, through 31, where he says this. And the Lord heard the voice, the voice of the words when he spake unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of his people when they have spoken unto thee. They have well said that they would have spoken. Oh, that there were such a heart of them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their what? Children forever. Go say to them, get, he said, get you into your tents again. But as for thee, stand by, he says, stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto you all the commandments and statutes and judgment which thou shalt teach them, and they do them in the land which I give them to possess it. So right here, when you see that. Right here, so, so you see that right here, verse, right here, verse 5, it says, I stood between the Lord and you at the time to show you the word of the Lord, but you were afraid by reason of fire and went not up into the mount. Because remember, Moses went up there for 40 days and 40 nights to get the uh, the rest of the laws from God. But that's all, but go ahead, verse 5, finish. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Okay, and verse 16. Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, mm -hmm. that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Amen, amen. So 
now it's going to go to Leviticus 19. <clears throat> Leviticus 19, because God said that you can't be holy unless you're honoring your mother and your father and also keeping the Sabbath as well. So you cannot be holy if you're not honoring your mother and your father. Leviticus 19, Leviticus 19, 1 through 3. Leviticus 19, 1 through 3. Can we get there? Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. So he said, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. What else? You shall fear every man his mother and his father, yes. and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Amen. So you shall fear every man or, or respect and reverence your mother and your father, and keep his Sabbaths. Amen. So now let's go ahead and go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, we're going to read 7 through 10. Because see, it's, it's, it's the responsibility of the parents to learn the word of God and then also to teach it to our children. And that's what, but unfortunately, you know, a lot of our parents, a lot of parents are people like that aren't even doing that. Some are agnostic, atheists, unbelievers, or anything like that. But this is how you can bring um, peace and tranquility to your, to your family, to your home, and to your surroundings when you're being obedient to God. Where are we at? Deuteronomy 4. Uh, 7 through 10. Go ahead. Oh, Deuteronomy 4. Uh, 7 through 10. When you get there, go ahead. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them? Yes. As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Yes. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. So he said, but teach them to thy sons and thy sons' sons. So like I said, that means to all your generations. Remember, not just dealing with sons, it's also dealing with, like I said, the daughters as well. Go ahead. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, yes. that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Amen. 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 They teach the children the word of God. So now let's go ahead and go to Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. Proverbs 1, verses 1 through 10. Yeah, we're going to be in Proverbs for a minute right here. Proverbs 1, <coughs> 1 through 10. Proverbs 1, 1 through 10. Can we get there? Go ahead. The Proverbs of Solomon, the yes. son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, mm -hmm. to receive the understanding, I'm sorry, to receive the instruction of wisdom, yes. justice, and judgment, and equity, yes. to give sub subtlety to the simple. Our prudence, our wisdom. Mm -hmm. To the young. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. Yes. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Mm -hmm. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. counsel. You know that saying that you know that's it's a foolish statement. You can't treat your, uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But it says a wise man will hear and will increase learning. Remember, we should never be content in whatever state we're in. We should always strive to learn more. Like I said, especially when we're fearing the Lord of God, like I said, because you know the Holy Spirit will give us understanding. To understand his word as well, but the Bible clearly says a wise man will hear and will increase learning. But you got some people say, Man, I've been reading the Bible 30, 40 years. You can't tell me anything. I know all about the Bible and don't know anything about the Bible. But see, they, they have a stubborn and hardened heart, to whereas now they won't be able to learn the word of God. But go ahead. To understand a proverb and the interpretation. Yes. The words of the wise and their dark sayings. And these dark sayings are talking about riddles. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Yes. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Uh-huh. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Remember, so it says, my son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Remember, this father and mother are keeping the commandments of God, and they're teaching the children the commandments of God. These are just wicked parents. Go ahead. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head. And chains about thy neck. Yes. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to go to the very next chapter. Very next chapter. Proverbs chapter 2, 1 through 10. What does forsake mean? Forsake? Yeah, we forsake when you don't do it. Yeah. Proverbs, uh, <coughs> Proverbs uh, chapter.
chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Go ahead. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, mm -hmm. so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and imply thine heart to understanding, yes. yea, if thou priest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Yes. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Yes. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. When you walk uprightly, that means you walk in the commandments of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand the righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Mm -hmm. Then when wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Amen, amen. But look what he says right here in, um, in verse 8, 7. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous, and he is a buckler or a shield to them that walk uprightly. Let me see. Is this, um, what is that? Psalms. I think it's Psalms 119. Psalms 119 and 114. He says, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Remember, Jesus is our buckler and our shield. He is our protection. That's why we have to hope in his word. Okay, so now let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Can you get there? Go ahead. My son, forget not my law. Yes. But let thine heart keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Right, because remember, you see, because he, he's obeying his, his, his father, his, he's obeying his parents. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. But go ahead. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Yes. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Mm -hmm. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. In the sight of God and man. Go ahead. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And that's the problem right now. People are leaning on to their own understanding. And that's that's not good, because if you lean on to your own understanding, he makes this statement right here in Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. You remember that thing, uh, Creflo? He had that, uh, he had this, but... He act like he quoted it because he put Creflo Don said you got you know you got it from Proverbs three, five and six, but he he quoted this and then put his name at the end of it Creflo Dollar like like that was his saying that was crazy remember that else mm -hmm. when he did that was oh, yeah. that was crazy. <laughs> go ahead verse six. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Uh -huh. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. But unfortunately, a lot of people are wise in their own eyes. So now let's go ahead and go to Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, 1 through 4. Proverbs 4, 1 through 4. When you get there, go ahead. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. Yes. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Hold on real quick. Let, let this, um, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Paul makes this statement to Timothy as well. Let me see. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, it says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So he's telling you, he says, right, as he said, if you put, he said, if you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. What does Proverbs uh, 4, verse 2 tell you what good doctrine is? For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Go ahead. Verse 3. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Mm -hmm. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Amen. Because he, he remember <laughs> Solomon was making that statement because in 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 1, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 says, 
Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon, his son, saying, Go the way of all the earth, be thou strong therefore, and show thyself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou may prosper in all that thou doest, and whether soever thou turnest thyself. So you see, so Solomon also reiterated, you know what I'm saying, like that, where he said in verse 3, For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved of the sight of my mother. Verse, uh, verse 4, he said, David, he taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words and keep my commandments and live. So we see that David, when he was about to die, he was telling Solomon to keep the laws of God. So now let's go and go to Proverbs 7. Proverbs 7, verses 1 through 3. Proverbs 7, verses 1 through 3. Proverbs 7, verses 1 through 3. And when you get there, go ahead. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Yes. Keep my commandments and live. Yes. And my laws as the apple of thine eye. Uh -huh. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Amen. 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 So now we're going to go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Like right now, you see a lot of our, especially of our people, like say like Chicago, a lot, a lot of these inner city places where they're just, you know, getting killed. Like a lot of them aren't obeying their mother and their father. Because one, like a lot of times, you know, the father's out the house. The mother's working about two or three jobs. Mom probably tell them, look, you need to be in the house while I'm at work. Don't be having no folks, these unruly kids coming to the house. They outside, gang banging, selling drugs and all that, and now they're getting killed in the street, not living a long life because what? They're not honoring their mother and their father. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But see, that's what I said. That's really prevalent in our community as well. Okay, now let's go with, okay, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Can we get there? Go ahead. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. What's the first commandment? What? With promise. Uh-huh. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Uh-huh. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. Right. So like I said, so you got to also make sure as far as parents, we don't want to provoke our children to wrath as well. To cause them to act out and be, you know, say, want to lash out at us. Like, we got to also treat them with respect and reverence as well. More with respect, rather, like I said. But he just tells you, verse 1 Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. So now, let's go ahead and go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, 18 through 21. Colossians chapter 3. <coughs> 18 through 21. Colossians chapter 3, 18 through 21. When you get there, go ahead. Why submit yourselves unto your own husband? Yes. As it is fit in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. So when your children are seeing an excellent um, household as far as you know your mother, the, the mother and father joining as one and, 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 and in harmony and being obedient to the Lord. That also, you know what I'm saying, will appeal the children to also to, to strive to have a marriage just like that as well, to where, you know, that the uh, that the wife, you know what I'm saying, that the wife submits to the husband, and that the husband also, because he says, and also in um, Ephesians chapter 5, that we're supposed to love our wives like Christ loved the church. So when you're doing these things, and your parent, your kids see an example of that, then that'll also flow with them, so when they can get married, they can also treat their wife with respect, and their children with respect as well. Go ahead, verse 2. The 12th verse 20. Go ahead. Children, obey your parents in all things. Yes. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Yes. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Right, lest they be discouraged. You should be belittling your children, talking down on your children. None of those things happen because when you start doing that, now they get, like I said, now all of a sudden they're they're in a state to where, like, why well, I want to see my parents? Because they always, you know, provoking me to anger. It's always speaking down on me. We're supposed to encourage our children. So now, let's go ahead and go to Matthew 15. Matthew 15, we're going to be verses 1 through 6. Matthew 15, verses 1 through 6. Matthew 15, verses 1 through 6. <coughs> Matthew 15, verses 1 through 6. Can we get there? Go ahead. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do, the, do thy disciples transgress the tradition 
of the elders. For they wash not their hands. No, one through nine. I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God right. by your tradition? Mm -hmm. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Right. You can also read that in Leviticus 20, verse 9. But you see that, though. Right here it says, verse, verse 3. But he answered unto them, Why do thou also transgress the commandment of God by your own traditions? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curses father and mother shall let him die the death. But, ye, verse 5, But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father, It is a gift by whatsoever thou, might, thou mightest be profit by him, by me. So look at this. In Mark chapter 7, verse 11, it's the same, it's the same uh, iteration story, but this is just Mark's point of view. Mark chapter 7, verse 11, he calls it Corbin. Right here it says, but ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corbin, or a gift, that is, that is to say, a gift, or by whatsoever thou mightest uh, profit by me, he shall be free. So look at this right here. This was a practice of Corbin, literally meaning offering. Anyone who made a Corbin vow was required to dedicate money to God's temple. And for some, that was money that, that otherwise would have gone to support their parents. Corbin had become a religiously acceptable and convenient way to neglect parents, circumvent, circumventing the, the adult's child responsibility to them. Although the action giving money to God seemed worthy and, and no doubt conferred prestige on the giver, many people who took the Corbin vow were disregarding God's commandments to care for their parents who were in need. This, these religious <coughs> leaders were ignorant to God's clear command to honor their mother and father. See, so they made their own law talk about it is Corbin. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So like, it's Corbin. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't want to have to uh, tend, you know, like to, uh, to, to their mother and their father. So we are now, okay, verse five. five. Go ahead. But ye say, who shall, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by, whos, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have me Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Yes. Ye hypocrites, well did Esaias prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Mm. And amen. He, okay. amen. 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 I wonder, like I said, I don't know how, you know what I'm saying, like when you look at a nursing home, is that almost consistent? Almost like the corporate thing where he's like, I put him in, don't have to deal with him, that's someone else care. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to. This is go. Let's go. Um, Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21, we're gonna read 18 through 21. See now this like I said, so when so a lot of times when, when a child was rebellious or, or obedient, this is what happened. When you talk about the nursing home thing, what I think is like if you're doing it just to get rid of them or just like inherit their money um, for yourself. Then that would be considered like thing, but if you're doing it because like you're like in a tough situation, mm -hmm. I that. And, yeah, exactly. and like you're trying to help them, but you can't physically help I them, but you come to check up on yeah, them every, I got you. every once in a while. Yeah, no, I have to say that's, that's why I said, that's why I'm like I don't really want to, because what they were doing with corporate law back then was, was totally I think different than what it's today. Yeah, so that's why I, said I didn't really want to you know too much going into it. But yeah, good point though. Uh, Deuteronomy 21, Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21. Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21. Can we get there? Go ahead. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him. That means that, that means they whooped him. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Spare the rise. Shut up. Go ahead. Will not hearken unto them. Uh, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. Mm. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, This is our son. This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. Mm. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Mm. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stone, mm. that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. Now suppose that was going on right now. You know what I'm saying? There'll be a whole lot of folks be like, man, hey, what'd you say, mom? What'd you say that? Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Schools would be. Schools would be, yeah, all of that. You know what I'm saying? But right now, you know, we're not living under that. But we do know that when the Lord returns, all these things are going to be set back up again. Because you can read that in, um, in Ezekiel chapter 36. In Ezekiel 36, verse, uh, verse 24. It 
says, For I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all the countries, and I will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart I will also give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land I give to your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. So if you see that this stuff's going to start happening. Like I say, remember, the law is going to go forth from Jerusalem. You can read that in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, that the whole world is going to be keeping the law at, at this time now. So like I said, so there ain't going to be no stubborn. If you want to act stubborn like that, this right here is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like that, if you just want to be rebellious. But now, let's go ahead and go to Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, 22 through 26. Proverbs 23, 22 through 26. Proverbs 23, 22 through 26. When you get there, go ahead. Hearken unto to my to thy father that begat thee, uh -huh. and despise not thy mother when she is old. Yes. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Yes. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, uh -huh. and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of them. Yes. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad. And she that bear thee shall rejoice. Yes. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. He said, let my he said, let your eyes observe my wife my ways. Why is that? Because the mother and father are teaching the children the commandments of the Lord. They're not telling the children to go out and sell drugs and be heathen in the street and gangbang and they ain't do none of that because you got some parents that don't do that. They're raising up their children who are bloods or crips. They got their they got their sons and they're gonna grow, they're gonna be a crip just like me. Like what? You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's foolish, you know what I'm saying? But we understand we're listening to the parents that are keeping the commandments of God. Last one. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, 26 through 31. Hebrews chapter 10, 26 through 31. Hebrews chapter 10, 26 through 31. And when you get there, go ahead. When we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Amen. And like I said, when you read Psalms 119, 142, and 151, Psalms 119, 142, says, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and the law is thy truth. 151, Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. So he's saying, right here, For we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remain us no more sacrifice for sin. So that's why I always say that, because a lot of people that are kind of doing things that are in the faith, but they may not know too much about the, you know, the Sabbath, the diet, they may not know too much about that. Those are the ones you really can't come after because you haven't really shown and they may not have known the knowledge of the truth. However, the ones after you have revealed the Sabbath, the dietary law, the speech, they, all these things to them, and they still reject it, now, now they won't be forgiven of their sin because they have received the knowledge of the truth, and yet they're still rejecting the knowledge. So it's the word of God, because the Bible also says that um, John 17, 17 says that, Sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is truth. So we understand that the word of God is truth as well. So we're saying that when the person has received the knowledge of the truth, the commandments of God, and still reject him, there's no more. Uh, they, like I said, they can't ask for forgiveness of Jesus because Jesus will not die for them. Go ahead, for their sins. Verse 27. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, who shall devour the adversary. Yes. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So you see, they died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So you saw like in the child, like I said, that child, that rebellious child, under grace now, he can have a chance to repent. Like, look, okay, I'm so sorry, mother, this and that. Mother, dad, okay, I'm going to repent and do it. Under the old, under the old, under the Moses law, they got stoned. You see, they got stoned to death, so they didn't have time. So they went under the grace period to where they were able to repent. But not just a child, but anyone else. You're saying doing sins, adultery, fornication, breaking Sabbath. God give us a chance to where we can repent and turn from our wicked ways and follow him. However, under the old covenant, they got stoned to death right then and there. Go ahead. Oh, I'll try to do that. That's what I was going to happen. Go ahead. Child, obviously, if it got that far where they had to get stoned, that child was rebellious. And remember, the 
Bible talks about rebellion, rebellion is like witchcraft. <laughs> you read um, uh, 1 Samuel 15 and 22 and 23. 1 Samuel 15. First Samuel 15, 22 and 23, uh, it says, uh, and he said, and Samuel said, Have the Lord had great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than a fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an iniquity. And idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, thou hast rejected thee from being king. So you see that when you're being rebellious, that's like a, like a form of witchcraft. And God's like, oh, because if that child, they had to go to the elders of the city, they weren't listening to the parents at all. And then they went there, and he was still, obviously, they didn't want to, he didn't want to turn from, so they got stoned right then and there. You know what I'm saying? He got stoned, yeah. But that child, but remember, the child, the parent went, you know what I'm saying, went through desperate measures to try to make sure that they were obeying them first. And then when they do it, they brought him to the elders of the city, and then the child still wanted to uh, rebel. Go ahead. So, um, so, so say you're like, like eight or nine, and you're like a rebellious child. Well, remember though, remember that that at this he said the uh, rebellious child. Remember God doesn't hold you accountable of sin until the age of twenty. Remember uh -huh. that's why in uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter one, one verse thirty-nine, Deuteronomy one and. Deuteronomy 1 and 39 says, Moreover, your little ones, your little ones are, are, are children from the age of uh, 0 to 19. Because remember, at the age of 20, that's why we can read in uh, number 14, um, Joshua and Caleb were the only ones, you know, so that were 20 and over that were able to go into the promised land. Everyone else that was 20 and over, they all died. But look at this. Deuteronomy 1 39. Moreover, your little ones, which ye have, he said, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in the day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, but unto them will I give it. They shall possess it. All the ones that were 20 and over, they all died. But see, he holds you accountable at the age of 20. That's why I was saying, maybe you want to get baptized. Like at 30. I was like, nah, like, I won't baptize you at least until they're 20 years old or older because now they have a full understanding of right and wrong. Exactly. Yeah, also, like, so it's the parents, and then they don't want to the parents, but they take them to like the city. Like That's what God said. It takes a, a village. Well, no, no, God never said that. That's, that's an African proverb. No, oh. God never said that. No, that's an African proverb. It takes a village to, uh, to raise a child. No, that's an African proverb. He would just bring it to the elders of the city. You know what I'm saying? That's all the way. Because remember, you got to have two or three witnesses to establish a judgment or to make a, or to make it a fact. And those were the witnesses, like said, to bring it to the elders of the city. Okay, where are we at? Um, <laughs> he's 20. <laughs> oh, yeah, see, 12. See, 12 is... Yeah, but you got to remember, though, that those Edomites are the ones that said, yeah, yeah, that right there is in a Babylonian town, and that's why they celebrate the Bar Mitzvah. A Bar Mitzvah is the age of 12. Yeah, that's not true, though. It's 20. Yeah, the Bible says 20. The Edomites say 12. So who are we going to trust, God or the Edomites? <laughs> there you go. Amen. Okay. Amen. So uh, Hebrews, okay, thank you. Hebrews 10, verse 28. Hold on. Oh, Catholics said the same thing? Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but the Bible clearly says 20. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, go ahead. Where, where are we? 28. 28, go ahead. Hebrews 10 and 28, go ahead. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Yes. If how much sore punishment suppose ye that he, suppose ye shall he be thought worthy? Who have trodden underfoot the Son of God, and have counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the Spirit of grace. All right, so remember now, Jesus, Jesus brought grace now, so now we're under grace, meaning that the sins that we're supposed to die for, that we, that we committed, he took those sins, but that doesn't necessarily say, okay, well since, well, since Jesus died for my sins, I can just go ahead and continue with sin. And no, that's not what he's saying. That under Moses' law, we die. You know what I'm saying? Without mercy of the two or three witnesses. Now that we're under grace, we have a chance to repent and, and turn from our wicked ways. But look what's going to happen, though. It's, like I said, it's even, it's even more harsh now because we're going to see. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 30. For we know him that have said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Right. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And that's another thing, too. 
God says, he says, I will recompense, say the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. God also didn't want our people uh, judging people as well because, you know, our people were wicked. And this is what they were doing as far as dealing with the judgment. In, uh, in Exodus chapter 23, Exodus 23 verse 1 says, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither thou shalt speak in a cause of decline after many the rest judgment. So you have people, like I said, you had a lot of these, these so-called, our leaders of Israel, they were also um, unrighteous witnesses. And you got to, here's an example of it real quick, and I'm about to end it. John chapter 8, here's an example of an unrighteous witness with Mary Magdalene. John chapter 8, this is why God took it right here. John chapter 8, it says, right here, right here, verse 3. John 8, verse 3, it says, And the scribes of Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken adultery. And when they had set her aside in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that thou shalt be stoned. But what say, what sayest thou? This say, he said, this they said, tempting Jesus that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Now, a lot of you know, say, like, we don't know what Jesus wrote in the, in, in the ground. We don't. But I understand that Jesus was a law keeper and he gave the law to Moses. I believe, I don't know, but I believe he wrote Deuteronomy 22 and 22 in the, in the ground where it says this. Deuteronomy 22 and 22 says, if a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, then he said, then they shall both, not one, both of them die and both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so that thou shalt put away evil from Israel. But yet, you caught him in the very act. You bring Mary Magdalene, but you didn't bring the man, though. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's a false witness. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So, that's why I just wanted to show that. You know what I'm saying? Just show that. That's why Jesus, he's judging our people now.